Snowball Spark. You want good words? Data languages. Talk real sports with a real man. Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. And now, here's the be-all, end-all, know-it-all of high school, college, and pro sports. Aaron Skinny Calc with the Skinny on Sports. We're talking about practice, man. I'm the MVP. Good Wednesday morning out there, Western Oklahoma. Welcome to the Skinny on Sports right here on 98.1 FM, the sports animal. Glad to have you along for the next hour. Final day of the week for us. As, uh, my favorite holiday of the year comes up tomorrow. And then, of course, um, that Friday, Black Friday. Got any plans to go shopping there, Jared? No. Black Friday, is it really even a thing anymore? No, I saw Black Friday deals like on November 1st. With all the... You know, the online capabilities or the, yeah, the Walmart, app capability. Yeah. You know, it used to be a mess. It, it actually it, kind of a sport. Yeah, it was a it was a, a team effort. You had to coordinate with your squad and go. Fights. Okay, I'm going here. I'm going here. I'll meet you there. Possibility of fights. Yeah, you had a list of things. Like, okay, I want this, this, and this. Those yeah, are my goal. You You're going to get this, this, and we'll meet at this register, and or we'll meet in the women's lingerie section because no one will be there, <laughs> and we would. Yeah, but now you just go online. And they've had these deals Amazon has, Walmart has. uh, All of those online shopping avenues have had it since like November 1st. It's like Black Friday month. I'm going to fire a boo at this. That what? It's not as much fun. It's not. It's it's fun with what I just said earlier, right? It's not as much fun. I I, I couldn't wait to to hear the stories from my mom and sisters or aunts about it. And, And it was people you knew. Would just make a complete fool of themselves on Black Friday. Uh, yeah, you just see those viral videos. I can't videos. believe she yeah. was pulling her hair over a pillowcase. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Is genius. That, is Black that, Friday is was that genius pot marketing. Really that worth it? It's only ten bucks off. Genius marketing. Black Friday was. Oh, for you know a long what Walmart time. would do is they would roll out the stuff like the day before into uh-huh. the aisles and have it wrapped up. Oh yeah. In cellophane. Oh and yeah. It got you going. Like, oh okay. That's where the five dollar DVDs are at. Yes. <laughs> you know, you, you, they 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 knew exactly what they're doing. The Roombas are right there. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's a little bit disappointing. Now it's Friday. just. I remember we bought a TV. And it was like, all right, this deal goes live at eleven p.m. online. Oh yeah. And we just sat there on our phones. I mean, used to you we had the TV bought. Used to you you would know, like there would be deals on certain things. But you'd have to stay. You had to spend like four hours in the store because mm-hmm. they would come over the deal and go, "Okay, shoppers, right. now on now, right? The, whatever is open," and everybody go running back there like a herd of yeah, yeah. cats, nuts. We're going to talk Thanksgiving food more than uh, Black Friday at the end of the show. Also, what are you thankful for in sports? To kind of twist the Thanksgiving into things that you're thankful for in the sporting world. I've got a few written down. I've got a group of people that I'm going to talk about that I'm not, I can't decide if I'm thankful for them or not thankful for them. Yeah, I know. It may be the, I don't, you were involved in these, you were involved in this and then just quit. So you don't get to get roasted here today. I didn't quit. Quit. So yeah, you get, you avoid that. And then, We've been trying to get to the state schools. Underachieve, overachieve, achieve. What have they done on the football field this year? And then today is uh, one of those days that, you know, we don't remember because we weren't alive. But 60 years ago today, something happened here in the United States that uh, changed the, uh, the USA, changed the world forever in a lot of ways. And I've been watching. Have you seen the National Geographic One Day in America series? Yeah, yeah. It's um, in the same people who made that nine eleven. The nine yeah. eleven, right? Yeah. They, there's a three parter yeah. about the JFK assassination, which happened in Dallas. It's pretty good. Uh, Sixty years ago today. Yeah, we just finished it up uh, last night Did with it? the third uh, installment. It's fantastic. It is. If, if you haven't seen that, we'll talk about that coming up right here at the top of the show. Two two five nine six nine eight is the phone or the text line. That is two two five. 9698. Give us a call, shoot us a text. We can talk about any of those things or whatever else might be on your mind. Feel free to chime right in at 225-9698. If you're going to be outside the listening area, you can stay in touch with the show a couple of ways. Log on to kadsam.com or you can download the app. 
The app's got it all. Radio, it's got the Penny News. You can check out all the new all the deals in the brand new edition to the Penny News online, thepennynews.com, or go pick up a free copy. It's out there because of the holiday. Um, we had it out Tuesday and now everywhere right now. Let's pick up that free copy of the Penny News. And, of course, Big Elk and Paragon TV, Hoops, as soon as we get starting Monday – into next week, it'll be wall-to-wall basketball, Big Elk and Paragon TV. You can find all those schedules on ParagonTV.com on a uh, Tuesday, Friday. And, of course, some tournaments will be happening as well. And the Skinny on Sports podcast, if you missed the show entirely, you can go back and find it anywhere that podcasts are available. How are you today, Jared? I'm good. Struggling with this head cold stuff, <clears throat> but I'm getting through it. You did not make it to Pack Saddle. No, I, I actually – I've been talking – we were reminding all our listeners five o'clock, five o'clock, and here I was about three fifteen, and it hit me. I got to get on the road, and so I was in a hurry. I got there with like maybe thirty minutes to spare, but no, I did not. I, unfortunately, no, I did not. I'm sorry, Arnett, folks. Didn't I've heard it. great things. I've heard great things. Uh, maybe next time, I just take a day and just drive up there. What Pretty are you drive doing Friday. Pretty drive, huh? Yeah, like what are you doing Friday? Well, you know, I'm watching OU. Be a perfect place to watch it. Have a lunch. Uh, you, you, so you've seen this day in America, one day in America, the, from National Geographic. I'll, I'll the admit, I only saw the first part though. JFK. But I've been p- kind of holding off because I, I'll have free time these mm-hmm. next few days to watch it. Now I got a lot of watching on my list. I want to watch Oppenheimer, which came out on digital the other day. That movie about, uh, you know, it's, and, um, and that that's like on my list, but I saw the first part and it is very much in the same vein of how nine 11, that uh, one day in America, that was covered um but like you said it's not as striking and potent as the 9-11 one was because we weren't alive when jfk was assassinated right so it's more of just history for us yeah and but, but it is history and it is very it's very good i the first it was very good yeah and it, and it go it kind of it basically just leads chronologically through the events of basically those two days three days uh in dallas and then all the way through to to jack ruby essentially lighting a fire on the conspiracies by shooting lee harvey oswald and yeah. not letting have you know his day in court or whatever was coming and then you know that leads to just where we are now and some information kind of gets leaked out ever so often you know all of a sudden now i mean just this year some different files were allowed to be open and there was some uh <laughs> there was some uh you know it's like CIA involvement there there's just there such a shroud of mystery came about because i think of Jack Ruby more than anything and him killing Oswald and then you know that just leads to to the wild speculation but it's it's an interesting show because it's got people that were that are still alive that were there i mean the secret, the secret service guy in charge of protecting Jackie is in the show. Yeah, that's Clint that, Hill. Yeah, and, you know, and, and just people that were there and involved. Here's something I learned last night. I had no idea, or maybe the second the second episode. I had no idea that. I mean, think about if this happened today. Just the, the entirety of this this operation. At one point in the early morning hours on November the twenty third. They paraded Lee Harvey Oswald out in front of the press and had like a press conference. <laughs> Can you even possibly imagine that happening now? No, the, the the closest thing was, and I remember, and I was a kid, I was back in 95, I was a fifth grader, uh, let me think, yeah, of uh, Timothy McVeigh when they paraded him out. Of course, he had the flag jacket on. He had the on, oh yeah from the, Ponca uh, or the or, from the, the uh, courthouse or the Perry Perry. Yeah, it was Perry, not Ponca. But I still thought, is that safe? Somebody can just absolutely aim at not. his head or yeah. something. And it kind of had that same. I remember thinking to myself, that kind of reminds me of when they Lee Harvey Oswald was trotted out in that. Uh, car garage or wherever it was and mm-hmm. the shooting happened but yeah so think about what happened what would have happened if somebody would have oh the conspiracies, would have assa- the would have, conspiracies yeah. about oklahoma city would would be rampant yeah. just like it is for yeah. the kennedy thing it's it's a really good series if you if you 
if, if you like you history, haven't seen, it yeah. is and and that because of the all the conspiracy theories that are out there that's something that's always intrigued me is that day and and you know what happened later you know mm-hmm. with obviously the, the the war he he was against you know war in vietnam and all of a sudden then that happens and what you know what that leads to questions about all of it and yeah and then we found out just not too many hillary clinton might have been a part of it so and there we go <laughs> now it's come full circle <laughs> yeah. I mean, anybody wow. anybody that dies politically it's pretty well, well goes back to the clintons yeah. no matter what <laughs> teasing sort of all right uh let's talk about <laughs> the in-state football schools and there is you know Last week of the season, <clears throat> you've got Oklahoma looking for a 10-win season after their first losing season a year ago in Brent Venable's first year since 1998. Let's start there. It's on uh, National Geographic is where the Kennedy Series – it's called One Day in America. JFK. JFK. Right. That's and, right. and you can also, three-parter. You can catch on Disney Plus if you have it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a it's a National Ge- Geographic right, which um, series. There's like a hub on Disney Plus. There it's is for all, that. Yeah, there's there's avenues to find. I'm sure if you have Hulu, you can search. Yeah, that's how it. we do it. Yeah. Hulu. Um, let's start with OU. If I would have told you in August that Oklahoma goes ten and two, beats Texas, but doesn't play for the Big Twelve title. What would your reaction to that have been back then? Well, back then we were talking about this. The schedule was, and I don't mean this to throw shade at OSU, so I don't need Poke fans going crazy here, but it was light enough or easy enough where if you told me they beat Texas but lost two other games and did not play for the Big 12 titles, that would tell me those were conference games that they lost. I'd say that's a little disappointing. What's crazy about, and I was banging the drum of the schedule <clears throat> as much or more than anybody, when you look at strength of ske- schedule metrics, Oklahoma's schedule is the 17th cu- toughest in the country. Hmm. I think there's there were some teams that maybe well, became better as Oklahoma the season State, went on. Kansas, Kansas. Are, are definitely two of those that are – that. Iowa, were, some, Iowa State somewhat. Iowa State a million percent. They were – Thought to be one of the they were, very they worst were, teams in the Big Twelve. Buried. They were buried. And now West Virginia. Are. There's some of those that are better. Yeah. I think it's. I think. I heard Landry say this earlier on the early morning show, and I think it's a hundred percent correct. OU fans' expectations changed in the Cotton Bowl. Oh yeah, yeah. And so, to me, anybody that can sit here right now and say they think it's a disappointment just had their they had their opinion completely changed when OU beat Texas because it probably meant they didn't expect that. Right. And then when it happened, it's like, oh my gosh, this is a playoff team. This was never going to be a playoff team. It's never looked like a play even that day in the Cotton Bowl, this didn't look like a playoff team. It just hasn't. There it's been inconsistent. And this is, I mean, what Bob Stoops did in 2000, what Jim Tressel did in 2002 for Oklahoma and for Ohio State, and then, you know, there's others that since then, it's not the norm. That's why you remember the years when when two-year turnarounds happened from, mm-hmm. uh, you know, from, from one year to the next. I would say they achieved. The, the slight, they achieved. They didn't overachieve. They didn't over or underachieve. <laughs> right. Because I, I said all, all preseason long, if you don't win, and that this is also counting a win tomorrow or uh, Friday. Right. But a 10-2 and two season, I, I said it because of the schedule, the, the Big 12 schedule. And was it better in some places? Yes. Was Cincinnati an easier game than we thought? Probably. You know, there, it all kind of ebbed and flowed. But at the end of the day, I said it all preseason. With this schedule, Oklahoma, the expectation has to be 10 wins, and that's exactly what they're going to end up with. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. And and, and I think if they can almost – and the, the rest of it evens out in a little bit of a way because you would have thought 10-2 and two means you lose to Texas. Yeah, right. So you win that game, which is where the little bit – you know that, that kind of elevates it a tick over achieving – but then 
because you lose to two other teams not named Texas keeps you out of the Big 12 title game it almost just evens it out to they achieved for me they were definitely better than last year I mean they're definitely better than last year uh defensively was is better of course there's there's flaws but they're they're better and there's a lot of games we've said this more than once that we would come back here on Monday and say that's a game they would have lost last year. They would have lost to BYU last year. They would have lost uh, to, say, Cincinnati, and that was a tough game uh, over there early in the season, maybe that SMU game. So there, there's a little bit of a turning of the corner there. That So that progression is good in, in for under Brent Venables um, moving forward. So I, 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 I like your answer, achieved. They achieve some goals of, of personal goals, maybe just to get better in certain in certain uh, scenarios and certain um, 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 spots on the team, which I think they have. And um, but yeah, but again, back to your original question: If you told me that hey, they beat Texas, but they lost two and didn't didn't even play for a Big Twelve title, I would have been like, well, that's underachieving. That that's disappointing because I mean, that t- you told me that they lost the two conference games. Who would that be? And it it'd really scratch your head. But um. Yeah, they are what they are, and and but that's a great observation. Is your expectations went from seventy five to one hundred and fifty after they beat Texas, right? Like, okay, now that's the the path is clear. Just take care of this easy schedule, go undefeated, and they have no choice but to put them into the college football playoff. And but then they go and lose those two games. So yeah, that's that's where I mean. I think you can almost split it into two seasons. The first half, you know, it it stops at the Texas game. Mm -hmm. Overachieved, looked like a better team than they really were. And then the second half of the season, underachieved to where you're not even playing for the Big 12 title. So that's, I mean, that's the one thing that has to tilt it a little bit toward the disappointing side is that you do win that game. And you still, as kings of this conference, undisputed kings of this conference for the entire, you know, the the years of the Big 12. I think it's going to end up being Oklahoma 114, everybody else 114. By the time this is over. It literally won half of the. So that's the one part that you cannot, I, I don't care what your expectations were, the expectations of Oklahoma football, period, no matter what the season before was. A conference title is not out of the realm of any OU team's expectations, and should be. I mean, that, that's that's like the the baseline, right? Yeah. I mean, that's the first to, step to of play, the major goal. Yeah. I mean, to play for a conference right. title has to be a baseline, which didn't, it, which doesn't look like it's going to happen. Therefore, that makes that part of it a little. It, it has to be considered a disappointment for the way that this team dominated, this program dominated the conference. Do you feel better, worse, same? After seeing OU this year, with what lies ahead in a year about where well, they set going into the SEC, I'm glad you asked that question because I I was going to say this before you asked that question was I a part of this season I think we can go back to this season in hindsight and say this was the season that they took on Brent's mantra it became Brent's team his attitude and it kind of you kind of saw that more spread out across the team with um, you know the edginess on defense on Stutzman was a big part of that too but I mean you see where I'm going with this and and um I'm sorry ask that question again what let me come back to what better it? worse same about OU's chances in the SEC after uh, seeing so the team okay this year. with so with that being said of this coming more of Brent's team because last year he was just he played with the cards that were dealt to him right I mean he played the hand and and it was it was what it was just I mean a team just what was left over to him got more of his guys in there again that attitude his team focus is is uh was more taken on in a role in this season so i to answer your question i think i feel better i i think um because of the recruiting he's getting more of his guys in there that's going to take on his philosophy his attitude his approach to winning and approach to playing the game yeah, I think, and that was the vision I think that uh, Castiglione had by getting Brent. Like, this is a guy we want to coach in the SEC. This is the guy we want him to build a program for to be better suited for the SEC. I think this is the guy who can do it. 
Uh, he has the coaching ability. I, I, I've come around on that. I was kind of questioning it after last season, even a couple, even early in this season. And there, there were some, but he's learned from that. Fine example. What about oh, okay at 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 BYU when they needed that first down? It wasn't just, you know, and he kind of alluded to that in the press conference. Was you got to go for it? You got to go get that first down. And it was, it was a different attitude from a few weeks ago in Lawrence, Kansas. So it's like he learned from that, and that was very relieving for me. So I think I feel better. I feel better moving forward, going to the SEC, anxious to see how, what recruiting looks like, anxious to see someone like Canick, how he develops, because you saw how Stutzman has developed under Brent under a couple years under his tutelage. So I'm anxious to see how that all moves forward. So I feel better. I feel better than what I did maybe at the beginning of the year. Yeah, I'm saying because here's the problem. You still see the same issues. BYU just ran it down your damn throat. BYU is the worst running team in the Big 12. You know, I mean, the, yep. the line play, the defensive line play, the offensive line play, it still looks way lacking. And I don't know, here's the problem. If you can't get that fixed early in this SEC time, will you ever get it fixed? Do you just become Ole Miss? Where you're perennially the second or third option for all these really good guy, really good line guys down there mm-hmm. that you're trying to figure out a way to pull. I, I, does the defense look better? Sure, but it, a lot of it has to do with the, the back end of the defense being so much better, not necessarily the front end. Oklahoma's had one sack in the last four games, and that was Danny Stutzman knocking the ball loose the other day. They haven't had a sack in four games from their guys up front. That ain't gonna cut it. That's the one part, that, and then. The offensive line, I think there's, I think you see talent there with Sexton, with Green, younger guys that that looked the part, even playing as true freshmen. I don't see that on the defensive line. I thought we might see it with that Aboware. Haven't. That's been one of the biggest disappointments to me of the whole season. Is it looked like in the early first few games he was going to take off. And I'm not saying be Harold Perkins, but be a guy that affected the game as the season moved along more and more, like Harold Perkins did a year ago for LSU. You don't even play now. You don't even see PJ out there. So that's that's some disappointment to me. And, and the scary part is, you know, the 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 one team that that is going to have SEC guys that was Texas had a hard time on both lines, even though OU won that game. So I, I'm probably the same. What about OSU? I I don't think for me, and especially the way the season started, how this can be anything but a massive. Not maybe not. I mean, they overachieved Vegas by at least three games. Six to six and a half was their win total. They've already got nine. Looking at ten, or they've got eight. Looking at nine, and then also playing in the Big Twelve title game. This has to. It's one of the best coaching jobs Mike Gundy's ever ever done to turn this team around. As the season started, much less what you had for preseason expectations. So for me, if I'm an OSU fan, this is. This is like the perfect last season. You beat OU. You're going to get to play in the Big 12 title game. And you're going to get a chance to send both OU and Texas out with losses. And be the last Big 12 champ of of this iteration of the conference. I have no idea how this can't just be like a dream season for OSU fans. Uh, my official answer is they've overachieved because of the off season, because of everybody they lost, and it just oh, yeah. looked like it was dire. So my official answer is, but I'll ask the questions though. I'll ask the questions. Could have they done more if not for the early season blunders, the quarterback <coughs> carousel, the the negligence of not playing Ollie Gordon? No. Could have they had won? No. Those? They couldn't have beat South Alabama. But, uh, what what would it have done though? They're still in the exact same spot, and that is. Big 12 champs. They oh, they were never going to be a playoff team. They weren't. You know, they, they're just not that. They're not. And so that's where, could they have an extra win? Sure, whatever. But it's still going to be, the the end result is still where it's at, and that is having a chance to be the Big 12 champ. You, you know what I'm saying? That's where, I mean, if they wouldn't have lost those games, they'd have lost something else. Just because OSU isn't a playoff team. And the losses would have came in different areas, different games. 
they just happened to occur when they did, and it got everything fixed. And then, you know, here, even when they got rolling, there was still that blip in the radar two weeks ago at UCF. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I mean, yeah, everything I, I just said was answered by that game, and then look what happened. Yeah. Yeah. And so maybe they, maybe they got a 10 win season guaranteed, but I don't see even all it does is just make you more frustrated to lose a game. I mean, I guess if, if you have it fixed a little earlier, maybe you don't lose to, you know, the UCF. Here's the deal the South Alabama game was coming. Because they didn't realize the problem, right? Right. And then they began to fix it against Iowa State. It was just a week too. It was a week too early to get everything fixed. You know that was the game where okay, it's Bowman's team here, Ollie, go running crazy. That's when it kind of started. So, but it it was always going to take that South Alabama game to like shake everybody, coaching staff wise, up enough to go. We're not eking these games out. We just got it put to us by South Alabama. We have to change. So it, that that moment was always coming with the way they started. And it looks silly as heck now why they did what they did. But in the grand scheme of things, I think OSU and the o- overachieving is the fact that they have, they have a chance to reach what their ceiling was. Mm-hmm. And that's a Big 12 title. That's right. No, OU's not a playoff team. Heck, no, they never were. That that's why. Who's asking that? It's just on the text line. Oh. That that's why that that's why the the win against Texas changed the expectations to an un unlofty goal. Right. Here's the deal: they were not a playoff team going into the season. Uh, but what I said was when if when they beat Texas, that's when those expectations and like Landry said and you said, they went up because of the schedule ahead of them. And if they can navigate that, get they would have no choice to put them into the playoffs. Doesn't mean they're a playoff team, right? They would probably play Georgia and get their doors blown off. They'd have been the team. They'd have been a lot like 2019 when Jalen Hurts was the quarterback. Somebody had to be fourth, and OU's resume was the best to be that sacrificial lamb. Sure. Now the Oklahoma, even after the Texas win, there were still there, there, there's they they absolutely deserved to be ranked where they were ranked because of what their resume was. The point is, sometimes there are playoff teams that aren't playoff teams. Well, that and that's, that's a, I mean, I'd have I like to do a case study and go back and look what what who were those? You know what I mean? Like that. I think I don't know. I mean, you have to go back and look, and I think we're going to get more of those. With this expansion of the playoffs, you're going to see somebody that's a 11 seed, 10 seed, 12 seed, and go, "Hey, they snuck in. They're not really a playoff team. There's better teams below them, but they had to put them there." That's the only Am I concern. Making sense? That's the only concern about a 12 because some sometimes there's not even four. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Or sometimes there's not four. There are four. You just can't put the best four in. Because of the the rules that have been put in place on how to pick teams, right? Those rules that, that yes. takes away yeah. that that's taken away with twelve. Correct. But at, at the end of the day, <coughs> at the end of the day, Oklahoma State absolutely overachieves from what their win total was in Vegas to start the season. The fact that they have a chance to beat both Oklahoma and Texas on their way out to win the Big Twelve title. That's an overachieving season, and especially when you consider what everybody thought the Monday after that South Alabama game and how brutal that was. Mm-hmm. In Oklahoma, achieve. Not over, not, a little bit over with beating Texas, a little and under with not making it to the Big 12 title game. So kind of balances everything out to, I mean, we all said 9-3, and 10-2 and two was a must, and here we are. With the win, with the win on Friday, it's ten and two. I, I, I don't think you can. You can't just change everything because of either some games they look better than maybe they were, and some games that they looked worse than maybe they were. It it all ends up evening out too. They did what was expected, right? Oh, the, the group text of our fantasy football league. Now they're wanting me to tell what they're thankful for about everybody. In the league. Oh, wow. This is my show. If you want to do that, get your own show. (laughs) 
Welcome back. Wow. Skinny on Sports, 98.1 FM, the sports animal. Hanging out here on a Wednesday before the Thanksgiving break, our last show of the week. <clears throat> we'll be back on Monday to rehash everything that happened. By that time, we'll know the matchups in all the conference title games and maybe have a little bit better of a pulse on who might be the Final Four. Real quick, were you surprised? We talked about it yesterday, but once you see it actually happen, were you surprised no. Florida State was moved down? No, no. No, um, I. Um, it's clear the injury is going to have an effect in this thing. They said it didn't. Oh bull, bull crap! Well, and and honestly, they they were able to get to slide by it because Washington beat Oregon State on the road, beat the number. You know, right, okay. so they could actually right. have some on field merit at least for now. But it does by just moving them one spot, it gives them flexibility. I think they get to watch Florida State for two weeks and decide. But uh, yeah, the top the top four change with Washington sliding up there, Florida State sliding out, joining Ohio State, Michigan, and Georgia in the top four. Okay, it is Thanksgiving, Jared. So what are you some sports th- thankful for in sports? What are some things that you are thankful for in the world of sports? Uh, let of course my thing breaks down. Here's one on the text line. What do you got? I'm thankful for Deron Bland. Yeah. So am I. Yeah. Picked up where Diggs left off. It's awesome. I am thankful for, uh, I mean, is it obvious? Could it be any more obvious? I know I've got him written down on my list, too. Is it a singular person? No. Oh, what do you got? It's a collective oh, group. Oh, uh, for you, yourself? It's a collective group of champions named the Texas Rangers. Yeah, I am so very thankful for them bringing a world title into my life. Awesome. Um, I couldn't have asked for a a better birthday gift after turning 40. I keep thinking my 40th year is turned into awesome for sports. So, yeah, the Texas Rangers, and I wrote it down. I can't say what I put between Texas and Rangers because I'm so excited about it. I'm still elated by, by it. So yeah, I'm I'm that's that's the number one for me. Very thankful for the Texas Rangers, the change in uh, uh, um, the front office, and then everything that it could mean later. I mean, Otani obviously is what I'm talking about. So yeah, Texas Rangers first world title. That's number one on my list. See, I'm thankful for a because of what we just discussed. I'm thankful for the 12 team playoff that's coming. And everything that that's created with the different conferences, I'm one of those I, that I don't mind the jumbled mess that is the conferences from a geography standpoint. Or I, I just, if if nobody's going to play anybody in the non-conference, which it seems like everyone's fallen even further away from. There was a time a couple years ago where it was like, man, we're getting all these good matchups, and now it's like you got Alabama and Texas and Ohio State and Notre Dame, and uh, that's about it. You know, Florida LSU State, and Florida yeah. State. But it seems like those are becoming less and less. So not that, needed anymore, yeah. Yeah, so if that's not going to happen, bring these conferences, make them bigger, make more teams in them, and we'll get these matchups more often. And I think the 12-team playoff was the catalyst of you know, schools like OU in Texas going, you know what, Let's money obviously is there too, but if we're going to do it for the money plus with 12 teams, it gives us just as good an opportunity to get in the playoffs as a Big 12 four-teamer would have. Let's do it. Yeah. And so now we'll get to see some of those games. So 12-team playoff is uh, is one thing I'm thankful for. It's a good one. Um, <clears throat> I think you're going to kind of have this. I wrote it when we talked about it, that the sports karma. <laughs> no, I didn't have that. I'm very it. thankful for that. We're, we Just recently we're seeing the, the instances of that, of, of Deshaun Watson and, and in whole of the Browns, right? How satisfying is it? The Browns continue to be the Browns. They make horrible decisions. It backfires on them. And this is what we get. But yet, they still won the other day. And, of course, Rapino and, and um, Lincoln Riley. So, just sports karma. I'm just thankful for sports karma. It is a thing. It all kind of comes around on you, on you. Here's a good one on the text line. I'm thankful for football tomorrow so we don't have those uncomfortable moments with family. <laughs> Can't uh, watch. I can't do that right now. <laughs> Whoa! Look at that play. Here's one. Thankful for USC taking Alex Grinch from OU. I think a bunch of OU fans would agree with that one. Well, I'm. I'm thankful for Chet Holmgren. Oh yeah. I'm thankful for Chet. That dude 
is awesome. The Thunder are going to be – It's. It, I read something yesterday, and it just kind of like blew me away. Like, So it was – somebody said, oh, are, people are already talking about how the Thunder – aren't going to be able to pay everyone, in quotes, you know, with the, with their young guys. Yeah. Um, J-Dub and Chet don't get paid for another four years. <laughs> wow. <laughs> when you, I mean, it's like it puts it into perspective, like, oh, holy crap. That's so far down the road. But it seems like it's so now because of the maybe the scar tissue from last time when uh, when the Thunder were this young and this, you know, good. But that's a long ways away from having to worry about a lot of that. So I'm thankful that Chet is such a stud early on. Um, well, it came on the on the text line about Alex Grinch. And I alluded to it in my sports karma about Lincoln Riley. But I am thankful for Lincoln Riley for leaving, for just for taking the job. It At the time, it stung. And then at the year after, it stunk. And, and, and it didn't look good. But now, one team, one program... Looks like it's kind of going in one direction, while the other is going in a better direction. Thank you, Lincoln Riley. I'm thankful for you for taking that job and taking Alex Grinch and, and moving on. Next two are going to be a little bit more uh, personal, and maybe the first one could be viewed as sucking up, but I don't care. I'm thankful for the schools that we get to work with. Oh, yeah. For what we do and the ease with which – things happen things are available because of the times where we go other places and it's not that way that's true you know having to uh, uh, getting the opportunity to go inside a press box (laughs) yes which next year is a chance three times that may not happen no I, i am though because it's all we have to do is ask and you know, oh, by yeah. the snap of a finger, yeah. we have it, and I really am because that stuff can be trying to trying to get information, trying to get rosters, trying to get set up, trying to get internet. All that all that thing can be such a hassle, but it's not with the schools that we work with. You and I, everybody in the in the Paragon communications well, yeah, world, right? No, uh, the Paragon TV, the Big Elk TV, it makes it so much easier. Oh, all kidding on aside, us. even the road, like last night going up to our net, right. I, I couldn't have had more help. They had a table and chair for me, power. They give me the internet password, all that stuff. It's you know, it, it so is. yeah. And in, in that vein, thank you to uh, my uh, my cameraman last night for the boys game. That'd be Coach Tatum Riddling because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a cameraman. She came up. Gra- I was about to do it all by myself. She came up, grabbed the camera. Now, uh, back to uh, NBA, though, Sam Presti, that's who I, you know, you, you mentioned Chet. Well, there's no Chet without Sam. Sam, um, and, and building this, you know, going through the process of building this team, I like his slow and steady wins the race approach where other markets will think, we got to buy our team now, we got to trade for these guys now, we got to win now, and we have to do it every year. That has never been the case for the Thunder. Thankful for him for building this team to where it's at now. And thankful for the fans for being patient enough to uh, understand this is a process that that's going to take time, and and right now we're starting to um, see the uh, the results of that. So thank so and ultimately, thank you, Sam Presti. I'm thankful for you this Thanksgiving season. Yeah, this one is definitely personal. I'm thankful that the clubhouse is open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah. I <laughs> oh bet. my goodness, six and a half years of of a lot, and now. It's not only standing, it's operational, it's open. Thankful for everybody that helped along the way, and there were so many people that did. Just, I'm, I, I really am. That's, I really am thankful that that is behind us, and now, you know, our, our lives will be so much easier one day a year, uh, yeah. so much cooler <laughs> one day a right. year than having to, uh, yeah. to endure what we've had to. But uh, I am. I'm so thankful yeah. that, that that process is over, and now it's uh, – Time to reap the benefits of, of so many people's really, really hard work. Um, final one for me, and I'm going to get kind of kind of uh, personal as well while we're doing that. But uh, and seriously, though, um, and you know me, I help out a lot with uh, the softball programs over at Canute. And I want to say thank you to not only the kids who put the time in, but the parents too. The parents who get them the practice without question, who get them the games Without question, they get them the tournaments. They're always asking, what can we do next? Who needs a ride? 
all that stuff, making sure all the kids are hydrated and cool and uniforms are clean and equipment is in, in top-notch shape. And, um, and again, uh, thank you to the kids who, who have a drive that uh, we see over there and, and we're very excited about. So um, I don't say that enough, I don't think, but even in text messages to the group and everything. So I'm very thankful for, uh, for what's going on right now in, in, uh, in the softball program that we're a part of. And finally, I don't know if this is a full thankful or a half thankful. I don't know. It's fully thankful. It, it's, even when it's a pain, it's still funny. So that's good. I'm thankful for the peer pressure fantasy football league that I am in. <laughs> and peer pressure could not be a more apt name of a league ever because of the things that ended up happening. I mean, you know that hot chip yes. that's now being outlawed? Uh, yeah, I may yeah. Be, I may be thankful that you can't get it anymore because Drew had one order. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, worst commission ever had one order. <laughs> and eBay canceled the sale just now. So that may oh, be, I may no. be really thankful for that since um, – uh, raccoon and i are in last place but each and every individual person in the league there's something to be thankful for point five i'm thankful for his womanly mood swings on a daily hourly weekly and even in seasonally basis he had drafted a team that was so good but he his 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 estrogen got the better of him and he, he wanted to start making <laughs> trades and he did. And now his team is so bad that, uh, he might, he might be the worst team in the league. So I guess at the end of the day, I'm thankful for his arrogance. The big guy, I'm thankful because he's going to keep me from eating that chip if we actually get it. But you know what? He has accepted that his team is terrible. And I'm thankful for that because I still haven't come to that realization, even though I'm in last place in the standings. Big guy, he accepted a long time ago. His team is terrible, and he's uh, just sweating out, not having to eat the chip. You can't – big guy, you can't say his name. Big guy. That's his name. That's it? That's it. The worst commission ever, I'm thankful for today's <laughs> trade that might keep me from eating that hot chip. And I'm also thankful just for his blatant disregard for rules. <laughs> on draft night even in the midst of eight people just yelling at him about how wrong he was he still was able to basically give the double birds to everyone and say i'm doing it how i want to because i'm the worst commish ever <laughs> so take that the bob i'm thankful for a lot of things about the bob him uh buying my son training wheels and a helmet for his bike it's about two weeks late but we appreciate that now are you serious i'm serious i'm thankful for his ability to i think i'm not so thankful for his ability to slither out a win and his voodoo whatever he did to two of our guys this week mark andrews and devon achan who played a total of eight plays combined and he still beat us by 1.8 i'm thankful for the fist and hasbullah because they continue to believe in Cooper Cup no matter the cost. <laughs> no one alert them that this is 2023 and this isn't like 2019 through 2022. Nobody tell them. I, I hate that I just said that because I'm afraid one of them's listening. <laughs> Their unending, unwavering faith in Cooper Cup is what I'm thankful for because it makes their team so, so much worse. K Hole, this one is actually a very, very. I'm serious about this. I'm thankful for the sw – he just takes wild swings with trades, acquisitions. And if the truth be known, he's the one who should have to be the most worried about eating that chip because of his deadly ulcer that could be activated oh, by the heat no. that would line the inner, inner workings of his stomach. And yet, no, no fear – no fear at all uh, when taking these swings at at, uh, at winning and not worrying about getting last. I'm thankful for paper cut because he and I are the only two in the lead that can do math. I don't know that that ever works out in our favor, but we are the only two that can add. And also just the fact that he doesn't mind issuing insincere apologies. <laughs> I don't mind that at all. The big fella, 
I'm thankful that he allows he doesn't allow point five any slack whatsoever. And yet he has the ultimate trump card on point five as the brother in law. He has it. Anytime he wants to play that card, he can play it, but he only uses it in critical situations. He doesn't just run around slamming the brother-in-law, I'm married to your sister <laughs> card all the time. But when it's needed, he'll do it. Yeah. And finally, Paper Cut's brother-in-law. I'm thankful that he, the spiciness that has come just this last week in knowing that he is the only one that's clinched a playoff spot. All of a sudden, he paper cuts brother in law's got all kinds of things to say. All kinds of things to say. Which can only mean one thing. Someone stole his phone. We gotta figure out who yeah. that is. <laughs> that way we can get it back to him. Seriously, I am thankful, and this is on our little text group that's already I'm thankful for just kind of looking up on certain days. And there being like 55 messages <laughs> and just reading through them and seeing what's going on. Yeah. I am. As much as it's going to suck to eat that hot chip, I am thankful for the group. Thanksgiving coming tomorrow. So, Jared, what are your plans? What do you got for Thanksgiving? Oh, um, it's my wife's side of the family this year. We switch it every other year, you know. So, it'll be uh, you know, right there in Canute and wake up to mimosas and... Um, get dinner ready, or I say lunch. It turns into like, you know how it works. About two o'clock is when you really start to dive in, and then we got the full the full on meal. I mean, we're gonna have turkey, ham. I asked Allie last night uh, what are the sides gonna be. She said uh, mashed potatoes, gravy, green bean casserole, stuffing, the works. So nothing uh, nothing fancy, just your traditional Thanksgiving meal. And we're about to get into our likes and dislikes, but cherry pie. Cherry pie. She asked me, what's your dessert? Cherry pie. You know me. Hmm. How about you? We got a, we're going to have a plethora of things. Starting tomorrow, we've got every day. Thursday, Friday, wow. Saturday, Sunday. Wow. So tomorrow, we're going to host, first time ever that we've hosted anything like this. You're hosting. And you're we're hosting. In, in the new home. Yes. Awesome. It's exciting. And, and we are having a non-traditional meal of shrimp and grits very good making some poblano and cheddar um cornbread to go along with it we'll have some kind of a kind of a creole style green beans and then we made pie crust last night so I, we're going to make pecan pies essentially a, across the entirety of it um so we're doing that then we're going to cheyenne on friday bringing dressing so i assume there's going to be a turkey there i'm making turkey saturday which that process will start thursday with the brine and then i made the bacon butter that i smear all over it and put inside the skin and all that yesterday so it's ready to go uh for for saturday to cook the turkey and take it to my father-in-law house so it's a uh it's fun that's you know i found this turkey recipe a long time ago that with the brine and being able to put it on a smoker it's just people like it so i'll continue to do it and then at uh, my mother-in-law's house on sunday we're taking broccoli and broccoli and rice casserole a pie and all that kind of stuff so we've got oh and i'm also taking i've got a green chili squash casserole that i'm taking to my father-in-law's as well so we've got some cooking ahead kinda of us all over the spectrum there yeah I it's like it. it's all over all right what are, what are your if you had like two three four favorite things thanksgiving wise I'm a, food what yeah, would you i'm a tradition guy i i'm a real tradition guy so i like the turkey like i said that pretty much what i just said what we're gonna have is what i like turkey ham a green bean casserole you know i was thinking about it they're kind of talking about this morning I, i'm not a mushroom fan but you know you have to have cream of mushroom in your green bean casserole i don't know if you have to but i like it deviled eggs i love deviled eggs and then, you know, rolls and then dessert, like I said, cherry pie. Everyone goes towards the pumpkin pie for some reason. I'm a cherry pie guy. How about you? Dressing. Probably because you don't get it very often. Yeah. But once or twice a year, but I love dressing. And the giblet gravy that goes on top of the dressing. 
I like, I, and this is no offense to anybody else, and I might be able to come in here on Monday and say something different. I like my turkey. Okay. I don't know how big a fan of turkey I am, but I like mine. Well, how you prepare it, right? Yes. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I like mine. And then broccoli and rice casserole with the cheese. That those I could that could be my and as a kid, actually I probably would have been scared to death of the dressing as a kid because I was such a picky eater. But I mean, I could have a fourth a, a four item plate: turkey, or if you count gravy, five turkey, gravy, <coughs> dressing, broccoli and rice casserole, and a roll. The rolls also are like a staple. I'm a pecan pie guy, and when we go to what we don't like, I'm one of the few out there, but I can't stand green bean casserole. I like green beans. I like mushrooms. I like the little onion straws that people put on them. But you don't like them together. I don't like it together. I do not like green bean casserole. Sometimes, yeah. And pumpkin pie is the biggest atrocity that there ever has been. The way it's celebrated starting like Labor Day just makes me sick. Yeah, I'm tired of it. No, it's not a. It's not good. It if it was good, it would be offered year round. Cherry pie is offered year round. You get it at, you get it at Easter, you get it at Fourth of July, you get it all the holidays. Pumpkin pie, nah, not a fan of pumpkin pie. You know what else I'm not a fan of? Cranberry sauce. Yeah, I've never been a fan. I don't even think I've tried it. Never understood it. I love cranberries. There's something out right now that only comes out at this time of year that is just delicious. Cranberry ginger ale. Ah. It is awesome. I, I like a lot of things with cranberry, but I I've ne- I don't even think I've ever tried the cranberry dressing. Ah, it's, just, it's just like um, not, not for me. Although, I have had it on – by itself, it's not good. You ever had – I've had this. I think my sister in law made it. It's like cranberry sauce, but she put some jalapenos in it and she put it on top of the of the uh, cream cheese. My wife makes this, and you use a cracker. It's a cranberry relish. Not bad. It's delicious. Not bad, but the cranberry sauce by itself on you. You want some cranberry sauce? I slap it on my plate. I'm like, no, this is gross. Yeah, it's cran. It's it's chopped up cranberries, jalapenos, oranges, orange yeah, juice. Yeah, yeah. You put it on top of the cream cheese, and it, it's almost like the jelly. It's like a cranberry jelly kind of thing. Right. Yeah, it's very, very tasty. My wife, that's one of her staples. More of a Christmas one than Thanksgiving sometimes. Right. But, yeah, it's 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 good stuff. I, and I don't mind the cranberry whatsoever. Okay. Got all kinds of and stuff. Of course, pumpkin pie on there. And, yeah. Uh, now I'm getting hungry. I'm getting a lot of texts, and now we're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that's it. Everyone have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Be safe out there. Maybe some snow by the time we get back. Yeah. Sun Saturday night, Sunday morning. We will be back Monday. I will for sure. Maybe Jared will as well. Skinny on Sports, wishing everybody a happy Thanksgiving. You've been listening to the Skinny on Sports podcast with Aaron Cow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to get alerts of when the latest podcast is available. Thanks for listening. That ball is blistered to right. Way.